we're on McCord Airfield, and this is the uh, McCord Airfield Bridge Repair Project. What you're looking at is the new structure right there, the concrete arch bridge structure that replaces two 12-foot diameter uh, steel culverts that were collapsing earlier this year. So this project removes those culverts and installs this new bridge structure under the entire width of the airfield. The steel culverts were installed in the early 1950s and their design life was about 50 years. So it's 2020, we got about 20 more years out of them than, than we would expect, 20 or 30 more years. This concrete arch bridge structure is much more durable. This design provides for uh, a much more natural stream bed through there, which improves fish passability. As you can see, it's got, it'll have a natural stream bed channel underneath, whereas the steel culverts did not. Um, so it's an improvement, but it's also a, uh, a much more durable long-term structure. This is our project site. Over here, you can see the excavated materials that were pulled out of the uh, site. They're staged there. In the foreground, you can see the green tanks. Those are part of the treatment system for, for uh, pulling PFAS, PFOA, out of all the groundwater that's coming from the site. You can also see some of the, the black pipes here. They're part of the diversion system, transporting water around our project site. You can also see the new arch bridge structure as it's being built from east to west. And uh, it's being placed on the footers. After it's placed and the concrete's cured, you can see in the background there, the equipment is backfilling soil over the new structure. Beginning from our right, you have the staging area where most of the, the material is stockpiled from the excavation. You can also see today they're grinding asphalt because all of the airfield pavements that were removed are, we're requiring them to incorporate them in the general backfill over and around the new structure. And the reason for that being there's some question if some of those airfield pavements may have some residual PFAS from flame retardants that have been used in the past. And because there's concern with PFAS getting into uh, the groundwater, we don't want to export that offsite and you know, not really know where it's going. So it's all getting ground and reincorporated in on site where it came from. This right here is our granulated activated carbon treatment system where all the groundwater that's pulled from the site. We have a fairly extensive um, dewatering system set up. So all the groundwater is being treated by this carbon treatment filtration system to remove all the PFAS and PFOA uh, chemicals before that water gets pumped back into the downstream channel. And then moving further north, there's a, quite the system of 16 HDPE pipes that the contractor is using to divert Clover Creek around the, the project site because obviously we needed to have a dry project site in order to be able to install the system. Interestingly, soon after the diversion system was installed during the driest time of the year, on, during one of the driest years on the books, we installed our dewatering system and the dewatering system inadvertently dried up the creek. Uh, so the, the diversion system hasn't seen much water to move yet. Uh, we're not into the wettest part of the year yet and pretty soon we'll, we'll be demobilizing the dewatering system so that the diversion system will start picking up more creek water. You can see the uh, arch structure, the new concrete arch structure. This gets installed on concrete footers and there's two arches, a left and a right. They're both, they're each six feet wide. Uh, the height of the, the span is about 15 feet from the footers and the, the span is 49 feet wide. So you can see the cranes operating today, placing those arches. 
You can also see the earthwork behind them as they're backfilling over the new structure. And in the far distance, you can probably see uh, the new base material for the runway pavement that's going to be installed here in the next few days. From back to front, you've got the runway and then you've got the taxiway. And then to your left, my right, we've got Delta ramp here. The entire structure uh, underlays the, ent the entire airfield from east to west and it's about 1,800 feet long. So from that far tree line all the way over to about where we're standing here, uh, just below us, the work has all begun on the east end and worked west with excavations. And then following the excavation, they've prepared the footer, the foundation bedding. So we'll see the bedding material, and then we'll see the, the concrete footers placed on top of that bedding material. They were precast in Spokane, Washington, and, and trucked over here. Uh, they're, they're pretty large, about nine foot wide, 13 foot long, three and a half foot tall. So one per truck. Those are placed, and then there's uh, about a three foot gap between each one that has additional rebar placed, and then concrete poured in that, that gap. So they become two long continuous footers. They're laying the, the bedding material and placing the concrete footers uh, as we speak and pouring the closures between those footers. You can also see the long white tubes and that's part of the dewatering system. So there's wells, small short wells about 20 feet deep or so that are uh, pulling the groundwater out to keep the project site dry. We'd actually be in the water right now if they if we weren't dewatering. In the end we'll have a 1,800 foot long bridge structure essentially which was the same length as the old culverts.